Uh, today, we want um, to go show you a demo. So a couple years ago, Whitman introduced our R9 robot, and it's been a slow transition into the industry from our current 8 series. But today, we're going to introduce you to the 9.1 software and our quick new programming generator, which we feel is the latest um, way to program a robot almost the easiest way possible on the market. Uh, so it's a, okay, I'm better. So the R9 software starts out with their quick new wizard. It starts with some basic levels, uh, oh, some basic three levels, so user levels. So you have your basic user level. When that person logs in, they can write a simple pick and place routine. Uh, so that's basically picking the part out of the mold and placing it on the, to a conveyor. We have our intermediate level. That takes the same pick and place routine, but introduces some new uh, intermediate um, programming. It's like routines for reject routines, or quality control routines. Then we have our advanced program. Um, when those log in, they get all the same features as the basic and intermediate, but we enter more into some core, special core sequences, some into our tool compliance, a little more advanced on there. Uh, today, I'm going to show you the basic level and how we program a simple pick and place robot today and how we can virtually see the robot running to test your program. And then I can talk a little bit more about the intermediate questions from there. So on the basic routine, once the, the user's logged in, uh, there's a quick new button down here. When they click the quick new button, it brings up our, our quick new. And what quick new is, it guides the user through questions with some guided videos to help them understand what they're programming. They don't need to learn any ladder logic or, or conservational logic or anything like that. It's just answer questions, and the robot's going to write that program for you. So this basic routine, uh, again, for simple pick and place, the first question it asks is how many placing positions you have on, the, uh, on your conveyor. So once I pick that part, I can drop one part on the conveyor, move and drop a second part, or three or four. It's, it's an unlimited number. Uh, by changing that, I just click the box here, and I can change that number to one, two, or three. I'm going to say one just to keep it simple today. The next, part, the next question asks how your parts are being held in your mold. So when you grab that part out of the mold, you're either going to use vacuums or a gripper circuit. It, it asks you, if you're using grippers, if I click grippers, you'll see the picture change to an uh, end of one tool with grippers. If you see vacuum, it changes back to the vacuum cups. Again, it's guiding the, the end user through it. I can also have a selection for vax and grips. So a lot of our users actually grab the part with vax and grips, not just vacuum. Uh, let's say today we'll say simple, we'll keep it with vacuum. Uh, the next question is about vacuum part monitoring. So when I grab that part, the robots have a built-in sensor. So when I have a set, set, I know that I have that part. And if I lose that part any time during the cycle, the robot will stop. So this question asks, do you want to part monitor? It defaults to yes. That's what most of our users use. So we, we kind of help keep that going that way. Uh, we click less and we hit next. Uh, the next screen is about how we're placing that, that on the conveyor. So the first question is, on the last screen, we say we're grabbing that part by vacuum. We need to tell the robot which vacuum circuit it's using. So most robots have one, Standard, maybe have two vacuum circuits, three or four. Some robots have 17 vacuum circuits. So you have to go into the configure here, and there's a list of your vacs. And if you pick grips, there'd be a list of grippers also. So you pick, I'm using vacuum one to grab this part. And I hit insert. Then I hit close. And now the robot knows I'm using vacuum one to grab that part. The next question is about how the conveyor belt will operate. Um, should the placing position be delayed when the conveyor belt stops? So a lot of our end users, the conveyor either continuously runs and we're just dropping parts on it and the parts take off. But in most cases, we want the conveyor to stop and allow the parts to be dropped on the conveyor and then index. So if I hit no here, you actually see the continuously run simulation. Again, the video is helping guide the, the user by the questions. If I click yes, back to yes, you'll see the conveyor run. The, ro the conveyor will actually stop when I place my position. The next uh, question is about how I want the parts to index afterwards. So that means if I drop my parts in my conveyors, do I need it to automatically index out so I make room for my next parts? Or do I want those parts to stay there so maybe I can stack another part on top of it or next to it? Again, how, when you answer the question, however you need to answer it, yes or no, you'll see the video up here change to show the end user what they're actually picking. Hit next to the next screen. Um, it goes over. This is just a, a comment area. So on here, I can click and I can add some comments. So if you want to talk about this, you might put your mold name here. You might leave a comment for everybody to know that the mold open needs to be so far. Whatever comments you want to put on in your program, you could type here. 
Uh, if you don't want anything, you hit next. Then we hit create. The one last question to ask is do you want to keep the parameters from the existing program? So this was running the program today. Uh, if I click yes on here, it will take all those saved positions and bring it into our new program. So I don't have to start fresh. I can just use those current positions to, and start from. If I click no, it would erase all those positions and I start completely clean and free. Most of you guys are molders. Most of molders will actually take a program, open them up, make changes to that program, and save it as a new program. So by clicking yes, you're doing exactly that. You're, you're skipping a few steps there. Once I wrote yes, that, program, that robot just wrote that entire program. And if I go to my text screen, you'll see all the logic here of this program. The end user didn't have to go write that. that this, those five simple questions, it, it taught that logic. But the program opens up into our quick new. So one of the last things we have to do is we have to make some final adjustments to our positions. And we try to make that as simple as possible also. So right here down the left-hand side, you'll see a button that says positions. These are all my positions in my program. If I click the timer button, these are all the timers that the, uh, the, the logic wrote. So like how long I want to run my conveyor for, how long I want the part to, once I release my part, how long I want the part, the robot to delay there. Uh, we have an expert button. An expert's where you find, um, in this program, you find your vacuum adjustment. So you can set your vacuum levels through the teach program on here. And you have your percentage button, which is our, your speed. So in a basic routine, you have a takeout speed and you have a placing speed. So that's the speed in and out of the molds, your takeout speed. The placing speed is the speed at the, uh, the conveyor. So making the adjustments, let's say I want to make an adjustment to, uh, let's see, we'll pick one here. My takeout position. There we go, my takeout position. My takeout position has a little picture here. If I hit details, it'll blow it up. The takeout position is actual the part where the robot's in the mold getting ready to grab that part. So again, the video is guiding the, customer, the end user to understand exactly what that position is. So make an adjustment here. I literally just click on the axis I want to adjust, say the Y axis. Then I can manually move the robot to where I want to go. And you see a virtual reputation here. If this was connected to a robot, the robot would be moving also. So I can manually move the robot with these buttons. Or on the pendant, you also have your what we call hard, hard buttons. So a lot of people don't like to touch the, the feel of a touch screen. They like a physical button. So we left the, the physical buttons on here also. Or I can click on my value, and I can actually type in the number. So if I'm really good and I know exactly what that number is, I can type in that number and just hit OK. I can do that for all these axes in that position. So that was my Y. If I click on X, again, the, the, the video changes to show you your X axis. And hit OK. And I can go to update those positions. Because I already had a program running in here, I'm already pretty close to my positions because the last program I was running had the same positions. So there should be minor adjustments to those here. Once you get those, program, those positions changed, this robot's actually ready to pick apart. I can reference or home the robot by our one-touch reference. So right now the robot would be moving. Uh, would be moving to the home position. Once it gets to the home position, the screen tells you it's in the home position, and it's ready to take off. I could, right now, put that in automatic and start picking parts. But one of the extra steps in the new Quick New is also what we call the dry cycle. So I can run this robot uh, with the molding machine open before I'm ready to pick parts and physically see the robot run through its process without worrying about taking a part. So I don't have to worry about the molding machine or the automation. I just worry about what my program did. So the dry cycle feature... Up here, we've dropped down our virtual pendant, and we have dry cycle. When I click dry cycle, it's going to bring up a couple more questions. The first question is about position adjustment. Dry cycle can run two ways. It can run the minute I turn it on, it just goes through its cycle, or I can have it run and it stops at every position and ask if I want to update it. So let's say if I, I leave this check mark, I want to stop at every position because I want to see it run, and I can make any minor adjustments I need to. Uh, so once I hit dry cycle, I don't have a physical robot today, but another version, an, another thing about this robot I'll show you in a minute, we, we actually virtually see it run on the, mold, on the screen also. So this is what it looks like. It just, ran, it just ran over and it stopped at its first position and asked why I want to make any changes. If I find I needed to tweak that position at all, just like I did earlier, I can click on the axis I need to move. I can manually move the robot or I can type in my value and then I hit OK. 
Uh, um, if I'm good with that position, I hit continue. The robot will then travel down to the next position. Once it gets to that next position, it stops and asks, do I want to make any adjustments to this position? If I want to, I could, or I can just hit continue. It will go through this. I'm going to save some time so I don't want to adjust every position. Uh, it will go through every position and run a cycle. The mold machine never had to make a part. It didn't worry about ejectors or nothing like that. It just worried about, let's, let's look at the robot and how it runs. Once I set through that quick new, this robot's actually ready to take off in production. So I'm at home. I'm going to go back to my dry cycle now, and I'm going to shut off my position changes. If I dry cycle now, I can actually start to see the robot move again. The robot would be physically moving. This time around, it's not going to stop at those positions. I've already made my changes. I now want to see it run through at a normal speed. Uh, I forgot one button there. What you're seeing here while the robot's referencing, this demo is actually our offline editor. So you're physically seeing a robot on here. This is the same software we give customers. You want to be able to program the robot at their desk. And while they're sitting at their desk, they can program a robot and virtually see it run on the screen. Um, when, this re when this software comes out, uh, you'll actually be able to put a molding machine uh, inside here. So you can actually see a virtual cell of your robot on a molding machine with a conveyor next to it. So when you're programming, you see that virtually running your screen at your desk. Then you can take that program out to the robot and, and run. Let's go to dry cycle one more time. So this is the dry cycle feature. It won't stop at each one of those positions earlier. Uh, it's running at a slow speed, but if I wanted to see it run faster, I can come out to my home screen and, and raise my speed back up. If I go into my 3D screen, you'll be able to see it there. So physically right now, I just programmed this robot in about 10 minutes. I talked more than I needed to. I could do it in about five minutes. So production-wise, with very little training, the, the user really just needs to know where to find these buttons. So in about a one day's worth of training, you can have a robot set up to be really quick and pick in place. Uh, earlier, I talked about the intermediate positions, or the, I'm sorry, the user levels. If I log in to my intermediate level, so I'm leaving basic and going to my intermediate level. If I go to my, my quick screen, my quick new screen. It looks identical to what I showed you earlier, but there's now there's extra questions about the reject routine or quality routine. So I can take that basic picks in place robot program I just programmed, and I can add in a reject routine just by saying, yes, I need a reject routine. And the robot's going to write the logic for that reject routine. And for example, that, that logic is it, it assigns an input so the robot can monitor an input from the mold machine or ERP system to let it know if it's a bad part. Uh, it also can set a counter, so you can have a counter and say every, the first five shots I want to reject, the first ten shots I want to reject. I don't need to write all that logic. Just by clicking yes here, the robot knows I want that logic into my program, and it loads it in. Uh, then the advanced one, I, I, same kind of questions, but it's more in the core. So every time I answer yes to a question, sometimes it might bring up more questions for that. Like your reject routine will bring up more questions about how many parts, it'll add a counter. Uh, if I didn't have a reject, I can just say no. These three basic levels, these three levels we have on here, they're also customizable. So if you're an end user and your basic levels, maybe it's a pick and place and you do a reject routine, but you don't do a quality, you don't need cores, that's completely customizable to the end user. So the end user can set up their basic routine to be a pick and place with a reject. And every time someone logs in on the basic routine, that's only the questions they have to answer to get the robot running. Uh, if your intermediate's a little bit more and you want to take away, maybe you don't have a quality routine, you can take that away on that one. So uh, when I say completely customizable, that's done by the end user, not just Whitman. So when we set these robots up in the field, we teach the end user how to set that stuff up. So you don't have to rely on us to come teach you how to use your robots. We're really allowing the end user to set up their passwords and the levels to what they feel fit in their need to their production. So one last thing I was going to show you if I go to my test. Uh, the R9 has a lot of great features. So what I, I suggest, or I, I hope, if you guys have some questions, you stay around and ask. 
Um, I could talk about this for about an hour and a half and still not go through all the features. The quick news, what we wanted to show you today, it, how simple it is to program. Um, there's also one other feature I'd like to uh, showcase, which is called our replay. Uh, a re replay, because this has a virtual simulation of the robot running, a replay, the robot records the last minute and 40 seconds of its cycle. And so every minute and 40 seconds, it's recording its cycle. So if, you, if, if for any reason the robot stopped, or maybe it crashed or something like that, and you're trying to figure out what happened, you can come into the replay screen, and you can hit play. The robot's still parked. It's not moving. It's just a virtual, uh, the, the robot's running in virtual reality here. And on here, I can see my text program, so I can watch the program run to figure out why did it stop. I also have the oscilloscope that I can actually turn off and on almost any input and output the robot has. And I can monitor it. I'm trying to clean it up here. I can monitor that. So one of good examples, let's say your robot goes over your mold machine and it's parked there. And your, your teach program says it's waiting for the mold to be open. Well, the mold's open. I don't know why it's not going. I can actually go on here and, and uh, use the graph to watch that signal coming from the mold machine. And I can see when it came off and on during the process. And I could tell, do I, am I really getting that input on and off? Um, Another way, you can actually graph the torque and positions of the uh, axis. So you can start to see if the robot stopped, did it, did it have a higher torque when it stopped? Maybe something, uh, maybe the robot hit something. Maybe there's a, 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 a hiccup on the bearing or something like that. And this graph here will outline that. Uh, again, it's the last minute, 40 seconds uh, of virtual reality to be able to figure out why your robot stopped or crashed or troubleshooting or anything like that. Uh, so the R9, again, this will be released here, but into this month is when in the United States. So every robot, R9 robot that leaves will have the new software on it. Uh, the, eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll come over, and some of our customers do have R9. I said earlier, the R9 robot's been out for a while. If you're a Whitman customer now and you have an, a current robot of ours, an 8-series robot, the physical robot itself is still the same robot. So your motors, your bearings, your I.O. cards, all that is the same robot. So your maintenance guys don't need any extra training there. When we update to the R9 control and you get all these great features, it's, it's just an IPC controller and dependent. So uh, production-wise, spare parts-wise, you really don't need to keep a lot of those, those parts on hand. Uh, the other great, another great feature here before I close is the R9 also, if you, some of, we always get asked about having two teach pendants per robot. The R9 robots now give us the access to have two complete teach programs per robot. So example, good, if, you, if you're molding on a 3,000-ton machine, and you want to leave one pennant on one side of the machine, you can leave the other pennant on the other side of the machine so you don't have to keep passing back and forth that pendant. Uh, or if you have a lot of automation, you like to leave the pendant on the operator's side, but you need another pendant on the, where all your automation to get down inside there. There's a lot more flexibility. If anyone's used a robot today, you know this, the hassle of having to take a corded pendant back and forth through the molding cell. By having two separate pendants today, we can actually we stop that and eliminate that from happening. Uh, so that's our 9.1 software, we do feel um, we still have our text programming. The sideways here. The robot we still have our text programming. Just a powerful part. Our text program is open base. Um, Whitman's had this programming since day one of their, their robot career here. Uh, so we, we like to say we have, with that text program, we have the most powerful controller. Now with that quick new, seeing how simple it is to answer five questions and have a program ready to go. We probably have the most simplest one also. I know we do, but we'll, we'll, I'm wanting for some of you guys to give us a feedback from that.